Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. I have some great information I want to share with you. We're going to talk about abdominal fat, the differences of the kind of fat you may be experiencing with yourself, with family, with loved ones. Uh, Multi-millions and millions of people are walking around with potential hazardous uh, health problems that could be leading to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease, inflammatory diseases. I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to go right through it. Uh, let me go ahead and remove this. The first thing I want to talk about is the difference between visceral fat and subcutaneous fat. A visceral fat generally is deep. It covers the organs. Uh, it kind of, kind of squeezes everything in as we look over here. You can look at that picture, it kind of squeezes over the organs, kind of strangulates the organs. As you look at subcutaneous fat, uh, no, don't do that. That's just kind of pinching, you know, the half inch, the inch, the two inch over the, over the top of the, underneath the skin. There is no harm in that whatsoever, so don't worry. The issue here is that uh, visceral fat deep in the abdominal area, and the most important thing is I want you to understand that this is linked to metabolic disturbances. So our focus here is to talk about this uh, deep fatted problem, this visceral fat problem. And that's what I'm going to spend time talking about. At the end of the program, I'm going to talk about something very important, the key component on how to prevent this from occurring. Uh, so I'll, I'll touch on that at the end. But let's move on. Uh, we talk about visceral fat. It's linked to metabolic disturbances. It affects very commonly cardiovascular disease, cholesterol problems, type 2 diabetes, uh, particularly uh, in women and men. But more in women, you will. this can be linked to breast cancer as well as gallbladder surgeries because of this increased visceral fat that you're working around with, walking around. Uh, if you look here, we look at the pear apple shape. Now, fat accumulated in the lower part of the body, the pear shaped is known as the subcutaneous, nothing to worry about. While fat in the abdominal area, the apple shape is largely visceral. And this is where the fat ends up. This is influenced by several factors. There's hereditary involved, there's hormones involved. But uh, I'm gonna talk about something about cortisol. I'm gonna say that towards the end but high cortisol levels is known to cause that visceral fat problem. And evidence and research shows that this high uh, visceral type of fat that people are walking around with, which are millions of people out there, and you're wondering why you have a hard time losing weight, because I'll talk about the end of the program, but this is where our health risks are. Now, the good news is that there are things that we can do to help this visceral fat, which I'll talk about at the end when it comes to exercise and diet. Uh, but when it comes to these fat cells, I want you to realize that the uh, abdominal fat cells, they're biologically active. Imagine something that's active. So when they're biologically active, uh, this affects our endocrine system, our, our glands, produces hormones and other substances that affect our health. Uh, and this is a key role uh, that we're... Uh, you are having chemicals being secreted with, from the fat that's pumping out to the immune system. They're called cytokines. And this, these, for example, are tumor necrosis factors, interleukin-6. Uh, these are the particular chemicals that's increasing the risk of the cardiovascular disease. Right in here, uh, cardiovascular disease, it increases risks of the heart uh, over here how it affects the arterial wall. Uh, and very important, we look at the bad cholesterol that happens in there. It starts clogging. It affects the arteries throughout the body, the coronary arteries that go to the heart. Uh, and uh, I want to mention, if I can find this here, give me a second. Uh, this will affect the old insulin resistance. Uh, understand if I come here, uh, back, just to give you an idea before I go into insulin, if you look what happens here when you eat a meal uh, and it goes in the intestines, you have sugars being released in the bloodstream. Glucose uh, is our primary sugar. The pancreas responds. You can look at the chart here. By secreting insulin, you have high glucose levels and insulin actually takes those glucose molecules to assimilate into the muscles, the cells, as well as the liver. 
to be stored as well as to allow it to get into the cells to give you energy. Uh, and that's normal glucose levels. You see homeostasis is restored to the left. That's fine. But what happens is when uh, we become insulin resistant because uh, these chemicals and a cortisol is being secreted that's causing a increased high amount of insulin and it burns out the pancreas obviously as well as causes this insulin resistance. Look to the right here. So in other words, to the left, the insulin is helping the sugar get into the cells. It's making way where it can fit. But if you look at the other side on the right, you're having a low intracellular glucose level. You're having a malfunctioning insulin receptor site, which we call insulin res resistance. Now, the other thing is, as a result uh, of this particular uh, condition, this visceral fat condition, um, if you look inside there, you can look at the liver, the kidney, the gallbladder, small intestine, uh, and actually the liver's in there. It just didn't mention all that. But what's happening is, is that pressure is putting uh, pressure upon the portal vein, uh, which is very important, which carries blood from the intestinal area to the liver. And there are these substances uh, released by the visceral fat, including the free fatty acids, enter the portal vein and travel to the liver where they can uh, influence the production of blood lipids. The visceral fat is directly linked to the higher total cholesterol and the LDL bad cholesterol and the lower HDL, which is a good cholesterol, as well as the insulin resistance. Now, as we look at insulin resistance, uh, back over here, because I know I'm skipping around with you, uh, when we look at insulin resistance, that what that means is that your body's muscles and liver cells don't respond adequately to normal insulin to normal levels of insulin. So the, the pancreatic hormone that carries glucose into the body's cells uh, is not working correctly. So glucose levels start to rise. And this is where we heighten diabetes, we heighten uh, heart disease, cardiovascular problems, placking, and all those bad, bad things. Uh, so if I touch back over here about bad cholesterol, uh, that's what's inhibiting blood supply to the important organs, uh, as well as the heart, which is a heart attack, the lungs, a pulmonary, uh, pulmonary uh, uh, you're, you're lacking uh, circulation to the heart, uh, to the brain, uh, stroke, you're lacking circulation of blood to the brain. And this causes, obviously, uh, hypoxia, lack of oxygen, and causes death to those tissues. So the question that comes up, and I want to bring up uh, the old, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Here it is, the old cortisol. This is the big factor here. When we are under stress, um, our bodies secrete high cortisol levels from the adrenal glands, and the cortisol levels bang out those sugar. It increases sugars. It, it, it causes the release of sugars from the liver. Uh, and you get a high influx of sugar, you start uh, causing uh, changes and decrease in serotonin, decrease uh, an increase in blood pressure, your memory. Uh, I mean, you've, you've got lots of different things going on. But the key thing here is that these cortisol levels are uh, suppressing. They're, it's making the immune system weaker. And what happens is when the cortisol levels uh, go sky high, um, it causes, let me see, the easiest way to understand this, first of all, it will affect your testosterone levels, okay? It will affect your whole endocrine system. It will actually increase insulin where it's going to continue to stay high because insulin levels are high, are, should be, I'm sorry, your cortisol levels should be higher in the morning and lower at night. So what happens is as we increase that stress, those cortisol levels stay high, which is inhibiting your sleep. Because when your cortisol levels are high, uh, your body is working out of gear. And what's happening is it's depleting your immune system and causing significant inflammation, which is affecting your tissues and your glands. So uh, when it comes down to uh, exercise, let me come to this little nutrition thing here. Now, how can you combat this thing? First of all, you have to watch your diet. Uh, good diet, get away from the processed foods, get away from the high fructose corn syrups, uh, whole natural 
foods are great. Omega-3s do wonders. Omega-3s lower cortisol levels. Omega-3s increase the immune factors of your, of your body. Uh, I'm big with omega-3s. There's a lot of research on there. Um, omega-3s will help you significantly. There's so much research about that when it comes to cortisol. But cortisol has a direct influence upon that extra fat that you're storing. Uh, I want to just briefly state uh, lean protein, uh, complex carbohydrates, watch your portions, uh, lots of greens, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, get rid of the sugary drinks, the high, uh, uh, the high sugar type of foods, even the refined grain pastas, the white breads, uh, coconut oils, I like the, the, the all natural oils I love. Uh, getting to a, a, a type of exercise regimen where you can start doing something regularly, even if it's walking, little light resistance, this will actually do wonders for you because uh, you have to understand, let me bring myself back here, uh, you have to understand that you know, you're, you're dealing with uh, high cortisol levels, high cortisol levels, what it does is this, is that um, the high cortisol levels allow the insulin to stay elevated. When that insulin stays elevated, all that insulin starts to pour whatever sugar it can and keep pushing into the cells. What happens is we get that rebound effect, and then we get that rebound effect and we become very hungry. We start craving fatty food. We start craving sugars. And so what happens is as a result of these cortisol levels that are staying way up above where they should be, that's affecting our instinct for food and our cravings. Because when we crave these particular foods, it, we're craving it for the reason is that our cortisol levels are staying high and it's not allowing our system to become balanced in homeostasis. So um, when it comes down to hormones, when it comes down to testosterone, when it comes down to your sex life, I can go to the whole list, which I'm not going to do here. Uh, when your cortisol levels are high, it's going to affect that, uh, that, that belly that you're having, that, that roundedness around your belly, and you'll notice it's hard. If you move it around, you kind of shake it, it's hard. The subcutaneous fat, when you grab it, it's kind of shaky, you know, like jello, which is good. Don't worry about that. Don't panic about that. It's the deep, visceral fat that's linked to heart disease, diabetes, uh, inflammatory diseases because that those chemicals that I discussed earlier are causing inflammation in your body and inflammation is linked to disease all diseases if you keep inflammation down you're going to be healthier you're going to live a longer life you're going to have less problems you're going to spend a lot less money on doctors and you'll be blessed in many positive ways so uh, please take that that information for what it's worth I think it's important it kind of just gets you back on the track of things. You need to keep those cortisol levels down. You can't let little things bother you. You got to relinquish the negativity. You got to do meditation, go out for walks, go out for exercise, start being around happy people, change your lifestyle. Because if those cortisol levels go high, then it's going to affect your whole endocrine system. You're going to start eating, start craving. And you're going to get the increased belly fat, uh, and it's going to be hard to get rid of. So you need to change your lifestyle in a positive way. And I really hope that this makes a big change for all my listeners, new, new viewers, as well as my subscribers. Um, I ask you to uh, subscribe if you haven't so. Um, I will continue to bring you the cutting edge. Please check out my, my videos on my channel. Hundreds and hundreds of self-help videos. I am a chiropractor, background in nutrition. Um, you, I ask you to like my Facebook page, uh, Motivational Doc on Facebook, Motivational Doc on Facebook. You can leave me some personal messages there as well. Leave your messages below. Thousands of people will be viewing this. I apologize for the length of this video, although I really had to bring you from, bring you, uh, from the beginning to the end to give you an understanding. This is your health. This is your life. And if I shortcut you, um, I would really be doing more harm than good. Anyways, I want to say bless, blessings to everyone out there. I thank you for tuning into this, vehicle, this, this video. And may God bless you and your family, and we'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.